Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to be talking about my skincare hits and misses for the month of September. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel it I am back with another hits and misses video. They are not going anywhere because I asked you guys last time and you said keep them coming. This is a product that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for my opinion, so I do apologize for the delay, but it is the Number Zin Number One Pure Glass Clean Tone Up Cream. So I have been an avid lover of Number Zin's Number Three Tone Up Cream and I have talked about it multiple times. I even did do a comparison review of the, the Number Two versus Number Three a little while back and honestly, I feel like it was like straight after I put out that video, they released the number one pure glass clean tone up cream. I have finally used it kind of enough times to gather my opinions on it. If you do not know what tone up creams are, they are something that is really popular in Asian beauty and probably something that works specifically well in the Asian beauty industry. The term tone up basically means to brighten the tone of your skin and to even out your skin complexion. The numbers on ones in particular are basically like an all in one. They do have skincare properties do have an SPF protection of 50 so it basically works as your sunscreen but it does also have a tint to it to kind of give your skin that my skin but better look where it does even out and make your skin look healthy without having to wear a lot of makeup. As someone who doesn't like to wear a lot of makeup on my day to day tone up creams are definitely something that comes in handy to basically get like maximum um, results with minimum effort if that makes sense. So I will be comparing it a fair bit to the number three just because it's an easy comparison so first things first, the number one definitely is lighter in color compared to the number three. The number three is a beigey tone, whereas the number one, I would describe it more as a kind of ivory cream color. So on my skin tone, it does definitely give it that slightly brighter look, but it does have more of a noticeable color tint to it. Next, I did find that the number one is definitely more moisturizing. And I know some of you did say that the number three can feel a little bit drying throughout the day but the number one is definitely more moisturizing it is more kind of dewy and even has a glowier finish when you first apply it so for me who has dry skin I have definitely been enjoying that factor although I would say it is more of a sheer coverage compared to the number three I did actually wear it as my base today and then applied concealer on top and like look at this glow. I don't look quite that glowy in real life, I feel like, but I didn't even mist my face today. Usually I mist my skin um, after makeup with the Dalba mist to give it that kind of glowy look. You guys know how much I love that mist, but I didn't even spray any mist today. And like, my skin is very glowy. So I do think it was from this and I do feel like it gives you a really kind of fresh, moisturized, kind of hydrated, dewy look. Overall, I actually do enjoy both kind of different reasons. I feel like when I want a bit more coverage, I would go for this one. When I want something really natural but look a bit more healthy and glowy, I would go for the number one. Next, I do have another SPF product. It is the Tori Den Dive In Mild Sun Cream. So if I'm completely honest, I used this one once and did not reach for it again. <laughs> I recently did try quite a number of Tori Dan's products and really did enjoy them. And since their like whole range is kind of hydrating, light texture kind of products, I expected that from this sunscreen as well. Although I did not realize that it is actually a physical sunscreen. And from that moment, I was like, oh, I might not like this. The first time I applied it, I believe I applied it on like a um, Instagram stories. And as soon as I put it out, like it's pretty white. Like the texture is actually like a medium bodied, creamy texture, I guess you could say. But even like applying it now on my hand, you can see it is pretty white. On my skin tone, I can somewhat make white cast like work, I guess you could say. I do have to work on it hard and like blend it out. And I did blend this out and it looked okay. Like I could wear it, but there was definitely a cast. So the fact that there was a cast on my skin tone, I believe there would be a strong cast on deeper skin tones. I applied it a second time throughout the day made the cast a little bit stronger. By the end of the day, my skin felt, I don't even know if it's dry, but it felt really tight. Like it felt like I did have like a layer of like paint 
or something that kind of had dried out and made my skin feel really tight. It was a bit of a process to remove it as well. Like I didn't even have makeup on that day. I did use like an oil cleanser, but I felt like it wasn't that easy to remove. And in the process, I feel like my skin got a little bit irritated and I just didn't really have a very good time with it, hence why I did not reach for it again. I can't say I've seen too many people talk about it, or at least in depth. Yeah, I guess it just was fairly strong on the white cast and really drying as a physical sunscreen. I mean, in general, I feel like physical sunscreens are more drying. The ones that I would recommend for drier skin is the Delba Mild Sun Cream, the physical one, and then also the Peslo Safe Sun is also a really nice hydrating, moisturizing physical sunscreen. But other than that, they do tend to be a little bit drying on my skin and this one was just obviously a miss. I did not enjoy it. If anyone has tried it out there, please, please, please let me know your thoughts. Next, I actually have toner pads. It is the Parnell Sikamanu Cotton Clear Pad. So I feel like maybe a lot of you guys have never heard of Parnell. Well, at least I hadn't even heard of them before until they kind of reached out and asked if I wanted to try their products. But it does seem to be a brand that is already pretty popular in Korea, just hasn't really um, reached kind of global markets yet. So I was very curious to try it and another reason I was curious was their Sikamanu ingredient which seems to be kind of like the patented ingredient that they came up with. It combines Sika or Centella Asiatica which is obviously soothing and calming to the skin and then also Manuka honey which I feel like I have heard honey in skincare but not Manuka honey and Manuka honey is something quite common in Australia and New Zealand and this one is actually sourced in New Zealand as well which I thought was really cool but basically it does have all these benefits that honey has like being nourishing, um, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory and all of that but it is a more potent version. It's basically like a medical grade honey. I feel like that's how you would like describe it. Apparently the whole range is supposed to be good for sensitive and acne prone skin. I don't know if you can tell on camera but it's also an unbleached pad so you can see the little like bits and pieces of the natural grain in it. But it is really, really soft, like very, very softening. It doesn't have those textures or bumps on it, which I like because I can't take a lot of exfoliation. I feel like if you've been here a while, you guys know that. But this one does have LHA in it. So it's really, really um, gentle chemical exfoliant combined with this really, really gentle cotton. And it is so nice and refreshing. It is very hydrating. I mean, I think you can tell it hydrates instantly. And I have been loving using it in the mornings so oftentimes in the morning I don't actually use a cleanser on my face since I do have drier skin I just rinse with lukewarm water and then I have been using this as my first step to kind of swipe down hydrate and then kind of wipe down the dust and stuff that I get on my neck as well and I haven't had it for that long but I've used a fair amount there's 70 pads in it yeah honestly I have just been enjoying them definitely a hit for me so far next I actually have a non-asian product and actually a spot treatment it is the as clear action medicated lotion so as clear is a australian brand i believe yeah made in australia by ego which i believe ego makes like qv and stuff as well whenever i do see kind of content from australian creators i do tend to see this as clear brand so it is a brand specifically made for acne prone skin and their main ingredient that they use is azelaic acid that is why it is called as clear i am sure although it is a pharmacy medicine that it says at the top you can buy it um freely in the pharmacy in australia i got mine at chemist warehouse this one is a 25 gram tube like it is pretty decent and I think it was like $12 or $11 or something. So really, really affordable. I just wanted to try something different as a spot treatment because you guys know that I love my Holy Grail spot treatment, the Lion Pear Acne Cream. I still use it like almost every day. It's just my go-to. But I do know it's a little bit harder to access for some people. And I don't know. I just wanted to try something different. So I did get this one and I will say... Like it works. It is a 20% azelaic acid solution, which some people have said that can be kind of strong, although my skin can tolerate it. So I did use it on a couple kind of active pimples. And I do feel like even like fairly big ones did die down or at least reduce in its redness and size like within a day or two. The only kind of con or thing I don't really like about it is that it is definitely matte like it is drying it mattifies the skin in that area and you do have to be careful with how much you apply because if I apply too much it does tend to kind of 
pill a little bit. And that is why I love my pear acne cream because it is so light, it blends into nothing. It doesn't leave your skin matte. So you can literally wear it day, night, whenever, underneath makeup, like it really doesn't matter. Whereas this one, I would probably stick to using it at nighttime. But for how affordable it is and how like big this tube is, I use such a small amount. So I am like, I'm probably not gonna get through this. Definitely a hit. Um, for me and if you are living in Australia, I think it is definitely a good option as a spot treatment Next I have the Dr. Jart Sika Pear Cream. Not gonna lie. I did not open this um, Recently in the last month. I actually opened it quite a while back But I had never really talked about it on my channel and as you can see It is pretty full. I Don't know why or I can't really pinpoint the exact reason to why but I just don't reach for it like I just don't. I know the whole Sika Pear range from Dr. Jart is really popular. I enjoy the redness correcting the little pot thing as well as the serum. They are very nice products, very nice ingredients and all of that. But for some reason, I just did not reach for this one much. It is a Sika Balm. Remember how big Sika Balms were? I feel like everything has Sika these days and they don't call it a Sika Balm, but I feel like a few years back, like everyone was coming out with a Sika Balm. This is one of like the OGs, I feel. It does have a nice texture to it. It's like, kind of creamy not too heavy not too thin but I do feel like the texture may be why I don't go back to it whenever I apply it I do feel like it somewhat sits on top of my skin I feel like it doesn't absorb or at least to the point that I want it to even though Sika Balms tend to feel that way because they are creating that film that protective layer on your skin it feels a little bit like just not to my liking. I'm just, I'm just weird with textures, I guess. The one that I would prefer over this one is actually the um, Revectin one, the Revectin Seeker Care Balm. I feel like that one has a bit more of a lighter texture, a bit more hydrating, and it does absorb into the skin well. So I guess I'll just have to say it's a miss for me. The fact that I just don't reach for it, I, again, wouldn't say it's a bad product, but it just didn't work out for me, I guess. The last product I have is the Ili Yoon Ceramide Atto Concentrate Cream. This is a big boy. This one's 200 mils. I mean, you can tell like next to my face, it is a big one. So I have tried Ilyun's Body Wash and Body Lotion in the past and definitely did enjoy it. Although I haven't really tried anything else. So I thought, why not go for a classic? I feel like I've seen this one everywhere. It is their kind of thicker moisturizer that can be used for the face and body. Hence why it is so big, but it is still super affordable. And I know they are really popular for people who do have sensitive skin since they are free from a lot of um, irritants. Generally, I feel like at least their blue range is packed with ceramides, so it's really nourishing to the skin and going to help strengthen that skin barrier. So I have been using these on the nights when I am feeling irritated. I feel like my skin is just feeling a little weak. I need a little kind of support of my skin barrier. I have been using this. If you want something basic in those instances where you're just like, my skin is stressed out, this is definitely going to be a good one to reach for. It definitely has a thick texture. So I tend to kind of warm it up in my hands first and then like apply it. I do tend to wear it at night because it is definitely moisturizing, but that moisture stays. I actually wore it last night and even when I woke up in the middle of the night, like I could tell my skin was retaining that moisture and it was protecting it too. So if you do have normal to drier skin, if you have a weakened skin barrier or you need to kind of nourish your skin back to health, it is a great one. And it'd be really great for those kind of rough dry patches like on your um, elbows and knees and such as well. Well, that is it for this month's Hits and Misses. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will leave you with the past two Hits and Misses because why not? Check out some other products that I've been kind of umming and ahhing about, you know? And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Mwah.